Welcome to lesson 7.2, use the converse of the Pythagorean theorem. So in lesson 7.1, we looked at using the Pythagorean theorem related to right triangles, solving for missing sides, legs, or hypotenuse, as well as figuring out triangle area. So in this section, we are now looking at the converse of the Pythagorean theorem, which states, if the square of the length of the longest side of a triangle is equal to the sum of the squares of the lengths of the other two sides, then the triangle is a right triangle. So if we think back to our original statement, saying if the two legs, the sum of the two legs squared was equal to the hypotenuse squared, then we had a right triangle. In this case, we're looking at it, the longest side equal to the sum of the other two. So that would be saying if C squared equals A squared plus B squared, then ABC is a right triangle. So my recommendation is don't get lost in all of the wording and the definition. I would just focus on this piece down here. Think of the converse as if C squared equals A squared plus B squared, then it is a right triangle. So we don't know in this case that C is for sure going to create the hypotenuse of a right triangle, but C will always be the longest side still to check. So the key to this, again, is to make sure that C is always your longest side. So if you need to check using a calculator, if you're not sure, for example, you could type in 3 times the square root of 34 to make sure that that's the longest side compared to 15 and 9, which 3 square roots of 34 is the longest side, so that's C. So C squared equals, which we're going to check, A squared plus B squared. So that ends up C squared. 3 square roots of 34, 3 squared is 9, square roots of 34 squared is 34. So that's 9 times 34, or 306. On the other side, 9 squared is 81, 15 squared is 225, add them together, and we have 306. So if it ends up equal on both sides, then it is a right triangle. If we look at B, our setup here, our longest side being 26, so 26 squared equals, which we're going to check, 22 squared plus 14 squared. So the question mark above the equals means we're checking to see if the two sides are equal. So 26 squared is 676, 22 squared, 484, and 14 squared, 196. So 196 plus 484 is 680. That does not equal 676. So that relationship does not create a right triangle. So in example two, they want us to tell whether or well, first, tell whether a triangle with the given side lengths is a right triangle. So, tell whether the triangle with the given side lengths is a right triangle. Now, what we are also going to look at is, if it's not a right triangle, is it acute or obtuse? So, before we do the parts 1, 2, and 3 here, for example, 2, we're going to look down at theorem 7.3 and 7.4. In 7.3, it says if the square of the length of the longest side of a triangle is less than the sum of the squares of the lengths of the other two sides, then the triangle is an acute triangle. 
So basically think of this part that's boxed in here. If c squared is less than a squared plus b squared, then it is an acute triangle. 7.4 then says, if that third side squared is greater than the sum of the other two sides squared, then it is an obtuse triangle. So again, the part boxed in here for it to be an obtuse triangle, c squared would end up being greater than a squared plus b squared. And we know from the previous, our converse theorem before, if c squared equals a squared plus b squared, then it is a right triangle. So looking at example two, number one, the first thing we want to do in all of these is to identify the longest side or the side that's going to be c. So if you can't tell, for example, like 4 times the square root of 3 what that value is, you'd want to type that into your calculator, 4 times square root of 3, so that you could compare it to 4 and 8. So in this case, 8 is our longest side, so that'll be c. So our setup is 4 squared plus 4 times the square root of 3 squared, and we're checking to see if that equals 8 squared. In this case, 4 times the square root of 3 squared is 16 times the square root of 3, or 48. And then 48 plus the 16 on the left from the 4 squared is 64. On the right, 8 squared is 64. So the two sides are equal, so that would give us a right triangle. In part 2... We have sides 10, 11, and 14, so 14 is our longest. So we would have 10 squared plus 11 squared, and we're checking to see its relationship with 14 squared. 10 squared is 100, 11 squared is 121, and 14 squared is 196. In this case, 100 plus 121 being 221, is greater than 196. So first off, no, it is not a right triangle. And in this case, because c squared, 196, was less than a squared plus b squared, that would give us an acute triangle. And then in part 3, we have sides 5, 6, and the square root of 61. Square root of 61 is our longest side. So, a squared plus b squared, checking to see its relationship with c squared. 5 squared plus 6 squared on the left. 25 plus 36 is 61. Square root of 61 squared on the right is 61. So, our two sides are equal. So, in this case, we have a right triangle. So, in example three, we're going to be looking at first, can these segments create a triangle? And then, if it is a triangle, would it be acute, right, or obtuse? So what we want to keep in mind is that in order to be a triangle, any two sides added together must be longer than the third side. So the way you want to check that is the two smallest sides added together must be longer or must be longer than the third side. And if it works in that relationship, it would work in the others. So in this case, 4.3 plus 5.2 is greater than 6.1. So yes, we can have a triangle. So can the segments 4.3, 5.2, and 6.1 form a triangle? Yes. Then part two, if so, would it be acute, right, or obtuse? So we know our longest side, 6.1, is c squared. So a squared plus b squared, checking if it equals c squared. Then this is where you'd use a calculator. 4.3 squared is 18.49, 5.2 squared, 
add those two together and we have 45.53 on the right 6.1 squared is 37.21 so a squared plus b squared in this case is greater than c squared which would mean we have an acute triangle because c squared is less than a squared plus b squared in part b we're checking segment lengths 3, 4, and 6. So 3 plus 4 is greater than 6. So yes, we can form a triangle. Then to check if it's acute, right, or obtuse, our setup would be 3 squared plus 4 squared on the left and 6 squared on the right. Then 9 plus 16 on the left is 25. 6 squared on the right is 36. So in this case, c squared is greater than a squared plus b squared, meaning we have an obtuse triangle. <clears throat> then example four being a word problem here related to a catamaran. So catamaran, you are part of the crew that's installing the mast on a catamaran ship. When the mast is fastened properly, it is perpendicular, so perpendicular, meaning 90 degree angle, to the trampoline deck, or the deck of the ship. How can you check that the mast is perpendicular using a tape measure? So what you'd want to do is you'd want to pick any Pythagorean triple. In this case, I chose a 3, 4, 5. You could use any Pythagorean triple relationship. On the mast, you would want to put a mark that is three feet up. And then on the deck, from wherever the base of the mast is, you would want to put a mark four feet away. Then using the tape measure, you would want to adjust the angle of the mast in between using the tape measure to measure from the two marks. Once that equals five feet, then you know you have that right triangle because the Pythagorean triple makes that right triangle. Now the table at the bottom of your notes is just a summary of the key ideas. So if we look there, the key concepts here are theorem 7.2, 7.3, and 7.4. For our relationship, the converse of the Pythagorean theorem, and then if we have an acute or an obtuse triangle.